Do you like the word of? Well, in English, that's all fine and dandy. In Hebrew, there's no such thing. So today we're going to talk about the Hebrew construct chain. Let's dive in. So Hebrew doesn't use a word for of like we have in English. Instead, it uses word order and something called the construct chain. And this chain is unbreakable. This chain links numerous words together to show this idea of possession of. Now, sometimes these words can be joined together with a maketh. We've talked about this before. It's similar to our con uh, constructions in English, like can't, won't, shouldn't. We use an apostrophe to join these words together. That's what the makef kind of does in construct chains. But the makef is not always present. Now, with these construct chains, the last noun is the absolute noun or what I like to call the head noun. Everything that comes prior to is the construct. Remember, the construct cannot be broken. The chain cannot be broken. So, you know the word order matters. Now, we've seen word order before. We've talked about VSO, verb, subject, object. Or maybe we haven't. We will. In Hebrew, the word order matters, especially in certain instances such as construct chains. So look at a few examples. Kol ha'ish, the voice of the man. Or you can shorten it to the man's voice. Or look at melech ha'eretz, the king of the land. Or you can shorten that to the land's king. Or look at eved ha'melech, the servant of the king. Or you can shorten that to the king's servant. Now, in all of these examples, they are definite. Why are they definite? Because the head noun, the absolute noun, the noun that comes last has the definite article. So if the absolute noun is definite, the entire chain 100% is definite. And so you will insert the word the before the head noun, as well as before the uh, construct noun. Sometimes the absolute noun won't have the definite article, but it will be definite by definition because of either a pronominal suffix, which makes it definite, or because the noun is a proper noun, which by definition is definite. So keep that in mind. There's three ways for the, uh, for the head noun, the absolute noun to be definite. One is with a definite article, one is with a pronominal suffix, and one is the noun just happens to be a proper noun, like a name. And when any of those three are true, the construct noun will also be definite. If the head noun is indefinite, the construct noun will be indefinite as well. So the construct noun simply mirrors the absolute's definiteness. Look for example, at kol ish, a voice of a man, or a man's voice, or look at melech eretz, a king of a land, or a land's king, or look at eved melech, a servant of a king, or a king's servant. So just remember, Construct noun mirrors the definiteness of the absolute noun. And let's look at some examples of either proper nouns or pronominal suffixes. Avi, Avraham. Avi is simply father. It does not have the pronominal suffix attached. Avi is the construct form. Avraham is the absolute noun. It is definite by definition because it's a proper noun. It's Abraham. And so in this construct chain, we have the father of Abraham. We have to insert the because Abraham, the head noun, the absolute noun is definite by virtue of being a proper noun. Does that make sense? Beth Malki, the house 
of my king. We see the Hyrick Yod ending the suffix, pronominal suffix, on melet. That's first common singular. So in this case, it's possessive, my. And because we have the pronominal suffix, it's definite. And because the head noun is definite, guess what? The whole chain is definite. The house of my king. It makes sense, right? Now you can stack multiple construct nouns into the chain, but there can only be one head noun, only one absolute. And that one is always dead last. The entire chain relies on that one absolute noun at the end for its definiteness. Look at divre melek ha'eretz. We have two construct nouns plus an absolute noun. The absolute is ha'eretz, the land. So we have construct, divri, which is word. We have melek, king. But because the head noun is definite, ha'eretz, the entire thing is definite. The words of the king of the land. And we mentioned the makef, so let's look at an example of that. And keep in mind, when makef is present, it's all considered to be one word. But that being said, it's only considered to be one word in terms of pronunciation. You can still distinguish and see there's a head noun, an absolute noun, that always comes at the end, and then there's some sort of construct noun at the beginning. Look at Ben David, son of David. Technically, that's definite because David, David, is by definition a proper noun and therefore definite. So you could translate it the son of David, call Ha'am all of the people. So here we have the preposition, kol, plus the definite ha'am, people, the people. So all of the people. You're not lost yet, are you? No? Okay, good. Now let's look at how adjectives work with the construct chain. Adjectives will go after the chain. This is specific to attributive adjectives. Now, attributive adjectives modify nouns. So, how do you know which noun in the construct chain is being modified by the attributive adjective? Well, for one, context will help. And two, depending on the number and gender of the noun might help you determine which noun in the construct chain is being modified. If the number and gender matches both of the nouns or all of the nouns, your only guess is context or your only help is context. But if it happens to be uniquely matching one of the nouns in gender and number, then you know it's modifying that one and not the other. Let's look at some examples. Devar Hamalka Hatov. The good word of the queen. Now, how do we know good Hatov is modifying the word Devar? Look at the number and gender. Hatov is masculine singular. Devar is masculine singular. Malcha is feminine singular. They do not match. The adjective does not match. So it has to go with Devar because it matches that one. That's how we know. But compare it with this. Devar Melek. Hatov. Hmm. Both the construct and the absolute nouns here are both masculine singular. So Hatov being masculine singular, we don't know. 
This is either going to be the good word of the king, or it's going to be the word of the good king. We'll have to rely on context. There's also the demonstrative at adjectives, ze, this, and those go at the end of the construct, construct chain, just like the attributive adjective. Look at esheth, haish, haze. The wife of this man. So the same issues we see with attributive adjectives in the construct chain apply here. The demonstrative pronoun or adjective, the demonstrative adjective must match in number and gender the noun it's modifying. When it matches both, then you have a couple of possible translations and context will be your guide. Look at devre anviim ha'ele. It can be either the word of these prophets, or it could be these words of the prophets. Context will be your guide. Now, substantive adjectives, which are adjectives functioning as a noun, can appear in the construct chain. Look at chacham lev, wise of heart. Chacham here is the construct form of Chacham. Now we mentioned earlier that the construct noun does not take the definite article. Instead, the absolute noun does. If I didn't mention that, well, I just did. But the construct noun can take inseparable prepositions. B le k. So for example, Babait David. In the house of David. Many nouns in the construct state especially in the masculine singular, don't change. But many nouns will change. Why do they change? Because the construct noun gives up its accent. So the way you pronounce the whole chain will be different than how the words usually are pronounced when they stand alone or stand apart. The entire construct chain is basically pronounced as a single word so that only the absolute has the accent. You can always look up the construct form of a noun in the lexicon, it will tell you. However, we can make some observations about these potential changes without the lexicon. So we can have oblaut, change. And we're speaking specifically about vowel changes. We can start with vowel reductions. In a final closed syllable, comets and sometimes tsere will reduce to a pathak. Look at mishpat. It has a comets normally, but in the construct form, it's a pathak, mishpat. I don't normally pronounce it mishpat. But I'm trying to prove a point here. It reduces from a comets to a pathak. Or in the case of the tsere, look at mizbecha. The construct changes to mizbach. But in an open, unaccented syllable, comets and sometimes tsere will reduce to a shava. Look at navi, prophet. In the construct, it becomes navi. Now, both of the examples we just saw could occur in a single word. Look at davar, for example, word. In the construct form, the first comets reduces to a shava because it's open, unaccented. And the second comets, which is in a closed syllable, reduces to a pathak. So instead of davar, we get divar. Now, it's important to be able to understand both call and bain. All and sun. These two occur in construct form the most out of any other nouns. Normally sun, bane, has a tsere, but in the construct form, it changes to segel. Instead of ben, it's ben. Call changes from holum to comets hatuf. There's also other monosyllabic nouns like yad, hand, 
and it changes from comets to pathak. So with all monosyllabic nouns, the changeable long vowel will change to its shorter vowel. Olam to comets hatuf, comets to pathak, tsere to segel. Do you follow? So we've seen ablaut, change, vowel reduction. There's also the endings, masculine plural, im, or also the diphthong, im. These will change to sere yod. And these can be combined with all of the ablaut we've seen before. Look at Elohim, God. In the construct, we have Elohe, God of. Look at Banim, sons. In the construct, we have Bene, sons of. You'll see the change in the ending, but you also see the reduction in the comments to a Shava. Speaking of endings, nouns that are feminine singular with the A ending will change to At or Ath, or to make it more pronounced, Ath. It goes from Comets Hey to Pathak Tav. But again, the previous rules that we saw for Ablaut can still occur. So this particular change can combine with the others. Some monosyllabic nouns will take a Hiric Yod. Don't confuse this with the first common singular pronominal suffix. This is simply in a construct chain, this is the construct form. So previously we saw monosyllabic nouns taking a changeable long vowel and shortening it to a, a shorter version of the vowel. In this case, there's another variation and that's we have the Hiric Yod at the end of the monosyllabic noun. But vowel rules still apply. And so you can have a combination of the previous things that we saw, like a comets reducing down to a pathak, but because of the relationship of that pathak to the rest of the noun, the, the noun's vowels, there might be further reduction. So in the case of Av, father, Comets changes to a pathak, but because of the hiric yod that attaches to this construct form, the pathak changes to a hatef pathak. Now, with nouns that have the diphthong ayin, right? We've got the pathak yod hiric ayin. We've got bayit house ayin i. The construct form will change the diphthong to sere yod. So, bayet, house, bet, house of. Nouns that end in segol he will change to sere he. Like in sade, becomes sade. So, in short, learn your vocabulary. Learning your vocabulary is going to help you identify when nouns changed. This will help you to determine when they might be in a construct chain. This will help you determine what the absolute noun is in said construct chain. This will help you determine if there's any attributive or demonstrative adjectives following. So knowing your vocabulary is key. Now, if you want to, you can also learn the construct forms when you learn your vocabulary. It's not really required, but it might be helpful. One final note before we go. Let's talk about superlatives. We've seen superlatives before with the mention of mean or call. But you can also have a superlative where the adjective has been made definite either due to uh, the definite article, pronominal suffix, or the construct chain. Now, context will always be key on these. So I'm not saying that every instance of these adjectives are superlative. You'll need to check the context. Min hakaton, ba'ad hagadol. Literally, that's from the small 
to the great. But it's superlative from the smallest to the greatest. But another common one is to have two adjectives together in a construct chain. The adjectives have to be identical. And the second one, the absolute, has to be plural, wherein the construct has to be singular. So the construct is singular, the absolute is plural, but both are identical. So for example, Kadesh HaKadashim, the holy of holies, literally. But as a superlative, the holiest of holies, or the most holy place, or Adonai Ha Adonim, the Lord of Lords, or the greatest Lord, or how about Shir Hasharim, the Song of Songs, or the greatest song. And that is the Hebrew construct chain. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. If you watch this video here, you can learn more about pronominal suffixes. Until next time.